dogs and sheep. The two animals don't get along very well and it's causing problems for some local shepherds. Second chance. The Alpine School District Space Center was due to close down, but donations could give it a new life. And Cyber Monday, the big online holiday sale is underway. Are Black Friday shoppers also mobbing the web? I'm Ashley Mungia, and I'm Jen Benson. It's Monday, November 26th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications, Award-winning 11 News at Noon. A Santa Cruz rancher lost part of his flock when his neighbor's dogs attacked his sheep. 11 News reporter Alexis Flake shows us what this shepherd did to protect his animals. It was the morning after it had snowed, and so there was blood everywhere, all over the corners of the pen and all the, over the snow. Jesse Robbins raises sheep for a living, so when he found two of his neighbor's dogs attacking his sheep, he knew he needed to protect his animals. We felt bad and having to shoot their dog, but you know, I think it's ultimately up to the owners of the animals to make sure that they're taken care of and you know, not out running free. Robin shot the more aggressive of the two dogs, but he still had to shoot two of his own sheep to put them out of their misery. And two more of his flock have serious head wounds from the dog attack. The sheep owners say that the two dogs, a pit bull and a Rottweiler, got into the pen by squeezing through this small space in the fence. Animal control officers say dogs often attack sheep and other animals in the winter months. If you get the heavy snowfall in the trees and it knocks down fences or, you know, gives the dogs a branch to climb out or, you know, for some reason, you know, it just, it's easier for the dogs to get out in winter. The law permits livestock owners to shoot dogs if they attack their animals, but control officers advise sheep herders to check their fences after winter storms and try to prevent the problem before it happens. In Santa Quin, Alexis Flake, 11 News. Animal Control also warns owners of naturally aggressive dogs to keep them on a chain leash in a double fenced area, especially near livestock. A weekend shooting in Springville left a West Mountain man dead and a Payson man in jail. Police found blood on 26-year-old Stephen Sutton's clothing when they pulled him over for a traffic violation. About the same time, officers in Springville got a call to the Flying J gas station parking lot where they found 28-year-old Jeff Burton Jensen dead from a gunshot wound. Police later spoke with Sutton's girlfriend. The reports say that she admitted she and Sutton planned to rob Jensen, but she says Sutton pulled the trigger during the robbery. A Colorado woman is in intensive care after a Davis County police officer shot her during a wild car chase. Police in Morgan County say the 41-year-old fled as they tried to pull her over for a broken taillight. The chase continued down I-84 where police spiked her tires, but the woman drove on her rim several miles after that. A deputy fired into the car and hit the woman. Police say they still don't know why the unnamed woman fled, although reports show there was a warrant out for her arrest and she was driving with a revoked license. A Provo homeowner says this Thanksgiving weekend left him grateful for firefighters' quick action. Kenneth Cutler says he thought he could smell burning in his home before he left yesterday afternoon, but couldn't find anything. Neighbors called 911 while he was away, and fire crews arrived to put out the blaze within 10 minutes. They say they still don't know the cause of the fire, but damages are adding up to $350,000. Students at San Juan High School are going back to class for the first time since a fire destroyed the school's library. The blaze also left six classrooms unfit for students and teachers. The school will use other buildings on or near campus while workers rebuild the destroyed areas. Police suspect two former students set the fire. The Alpine School District's ill-fated Space Center could now potentially become a magnet school of its own. The public didn't want to spend extra money on the center's remodel a few years ago, but with new funds and support, district officials say they might expand the center with additional programs. While the Space Center safety renovations, officials say they'll use this time to improve the curriculum. A new ruling will mean Utah judges will allow television cameras into the state's courtrooms. The 9-3 vote from the State Judicial Council goes into effect in April. The council also released numbers showing that more than 80% of Utahns think our courts are doing a good to excellent job, and that number is up from 78% half a decade ago. When 11 News at Noon returns.
Black Friday. Shoppers brave the cold night to get some deals. How does 2012 compare to past years? And Manic Monday. People are shopping online today to find holiday deals. Do you know how to avoid online scams? Well, we've got some tips for you. Stay with us. Shoppers turned out in droves at stores across the country to take advantage of Black Friday deals. A national retail survey shows, shows 6 million more people braved the big crowds over this holiday weekend than last year. Shoppers spend an average of $423 a person, but store managers say they brace for the Black Friday shoppers. A lot of organization, a lot of operational things that we need to do to prepare. Um, and we, we have a seasonal hiring staff that will hire about 100, 100 seasonal people this time of year to try to just keep up with the crowd. But shoppers had to walk through a bit of protest on Black Friday. Walmart employees across the country marched on America's largest retailer Thanksgiving weekend. Workers walking the picket line say they protested the pay, the hours, and company retaliation. Despite the picket lines, Walmart says it's had its best Black Friday ever. Black Friday may not be your way of spending Thanksgiving weekend, and if that's the case, you're not alone. 11 News reporter Jessica Black shows us how some people are diving headfirst into Cyber Monday to avoid Black Friday like the Black Plague. Seriously, waking up at like 2, 3 in the morning just to go get a good deal? Are you kidding me? When it comes to Christmas shopping, Jenny Spatafora doesn't have to think twice about Black Friday. Avoiding long lines, the stores running out of stock, and more sleep are just some of the many reasons why she says Cyber Monday is the best option for this family. I didn't overspend. I spent, I stuck more to my budget and more to my plan than I ever have before. Spatafora says she can find what she wants a lot easier online. And she can buy her gifts and get them delivered to her house all by a click of a button. Spatafora says she's doing her shopping online so she can spend Thanksgiving with her family. But the Utah Commerce Department says it's not such a piece of cake. Or in this case, pie. Department officials say that as ordering online picks up, so does the amount of fraud. So they released a list of helpful hints in preparation for Cyber Monday. The list suggests comparing prices, researching the seller, and keeping a paper trail folder. People are, you know, busy now. We're wanting them to, to be careful. Whether you do Cyber Monday today or shop online another day, the Commerce Department says you should always make sure you are double-checking information and looking for the best deals and prices. In Springfield, Jessica Black, 11 News. Gianni says if you do come across a place where you think you've been cheated, you can go to the Department of Commerce for help. You can find out how to contact them by going to Jessica's story at 11news.byu.edu. Violent protests in Egypt over their president's new power, a deadly factory fire in Bangladesh, and Israel defense minister resigns. Here's a look at news from around the world. Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi will meet with judges today to talk about what critics call his judicial power grab. More than 500 people were injured in a violent protest against Morsi's decree that shields him from judicial review, which prevents the courts from challenging any of his decisions. The country's General Assembly of Judges is calling for a nationwide strike in all courts. Israeli Defense Minister Ahud Barak announced his resignation today. This comes at a fragile time for Israel after a lethal conflict with Hamas in Gaza. Barak says he will stay with his position until the country's next election in January, but that he's quitting politics to spend more time with his family. And more than 100 people are dead in Bangladesh after a factory fire. The blaze started on the first floor of the clothing factory and quickly spread throughout the nine-story building. Firefighters had a hard time controlling it and many of workers were trapped inside. Survivors say it was because managers ignored the fire alarm, an exit door was locked, and fire extinguishers were not working. And that's your look at news from around the world. Jen? New York City announced a new job initiative in the wake of Superstorm Sandy. The governor says he has jobs for 5,000 unemployed young adults. Arlene Bornstein has the story from Brooklyn. You know your communities. You know the, what works needs to be done and how to get it done. FEMA and state officials are hoping to hire more than 5,000 people who live in storm-ridden areas in a two-fold effort to rebuild the community and get unemployed Sandy victims working again. We estimate that 200,000 New Yorkers became unemployed. So far, 
50,000 New Yorkers have filed storm-related unemployment claims. The initiative is meant to help Red Hook residents like Taina Coella, who says she was about to start a job at a restaurant when Sandy hit. The flood is all the electricity in the basement, the boiler, because the restaurant is actually like, it do seafood and stuff. I was about to start work. It just shut down. Desmond Hill also needs a job. The Red Hook resident applied just moments after the announcement was made. I worked in Coney Island, actually, uh, for the amusement area, and Sandy actually hit during our last day of the season, so we actually canceled the day so we can actually, you know, shut the rides down and try to get everything back together. All unemployed adults impacted by Sandy can apply by going to labor.ny.gov slash Sandy Jobs or calling 1-888-469-7365. But the initiative is geared towards employing young people ages 18 through 24. When you look at communities like this, it's this community, it's that age bracket that has the highest unemployment. So we're doing a two for here. We're, we're trying to tackle the unemployment problem in an area like this, where the unemployment uh, for that age group can run as high as 36, 40 percent. But applicants, young and old, are looking forward not just to a little extra money, but they rebuild their homes and community. If they knock us down, we got to get back up and rebuild it, you know, make it better than what it was before. These jobs are for both short-term and long-term projects. The city expects the campaign to last up to six months. You know what I wouldn't mind having for six months yeah. is this beautiful weather oh, outside. I Angela, I it's hope true. it stays. Thanksgiving was beautiful. Anything uh, coming up for this next week? Well, I think we're all hoping it stays. Um, I'll let you know when we come back. We've got some good temperatures for the next couple days, but I'll let you know what's going to happen towards the end of the week when we return. Good afternoon to all of you. It's a beautiful day today, nice and sunny, clear skies. If we take a look just behind me, this is just the shot right behind the building that we're in right now, so it's really nice outside. Um, for the rest of the day, we're going to see still just sun and clear skies. If we can take a look at what we've got going, it's currently 37 degrees and 70% humidity with pretty calm wind speeds. Taking a look at what we're going to see throughout the day, the sun is going to stay around, so it'll be a pretty nice day, although the temperatures will warm up, which I'm really happy about. Um, we'll see probably around um, around 40, 40, low 40s today throughout most of the day. Um, and um, sunset we'll see tonight come in at 5.03 p.m. Uh, 30 degrees will be the low and we'll see mostly clear skies. I don't know about you guys, but this weekend I got a chance to go up and see the lights in Salt Lake. So beautiful. So if you're heading out tonight for that, um, 30 degrees is pretty cold and um, the, the winds will clear, or excuse me, the winds will actually start to pick up towards the evening time. So bundle up if you're gonna go out tonight. Um, what we can see throughout the state, the highs will be uh, 41 in Logan. That's the lowest, lowest high for today. And um, we'll see mostly 40s throughout the whole entire state. 57 in Moab, 57 in Cedar City, 64 in St. George. And can I just mention 47 in Salt Lake where my grandma lives. Beautiful day, beautiful day. Um, if we can take a look at what's going on in St. George. Closer look, closer look. 64 today, pretty nice. And um, we'll have pretty mild temperatures in Hall of St. George throughout um, pretty much the rest of the week. Um, we'll see Wednesday and Friday have some cloud coverage, but other than that, 60s and 40s for the low, not too bad. In northern Utah, we'll also see kind of pretty mild temperatures, but of course a little bit a little bit colder because um, that just tends to happen, but still not too bad. 47 for today, 49. 51 on Wednesday, 51 on Thursday as well. We'll start to see, look, Wednesday and Thursday, some cloud coverage come in, and then Friday we might have some rain. Uh, it'll be 55 for the high, though, so um, shouldn't be snow. But um, with 38 of a low, if it gets any lower than that, we might see some snow, maybe some snow in some of the other, the ele more elevated temperatures, but not too bad. It'll be a pretty, pretty mild week for all of this temperature, so your wish came true, ladies. There you wow. go. Good week. So glad for that. Yeah, and I was hoping on the way home from Thanksgiving, I wouldn't see any snowstorms, so I'm really grateful for that yeah. as well. Really That's good. Great. All right. Thanks, Thanks Angela. Angela. So, Ben, although we didn't win the soccer game, the women's soccer game, but we still made history. There you go. Didn't we, with the, we had, like, so many fans there so many. come out. That's right. The tickets sold out two days before the match even happened, and uh, there's uh, the fifth most all-time attendance there, so the game was, you know, crowded. Next on sports, the fall sports season is wrapping up, which led to the final showdown for Cougar soccer in its last home match, win or lose. The Elite Eight showdown with North Carolina went down to the wire. 
and hot-handed Haas. Some great basketball players were on hand to witness Tyler Haas achieve something that no Cougar has done since a guy named Jimmer. I'll show you what it was. Sports is next. Stay tuned. BYU football finished off the regular season with their traditional offensive expertise. Senior James Gott got his first career start and threw six touchdowns in a route of New Mexico State. The Cougars came away with a 50-14 win and now prepare for the Poinsettia Bowl December 20th in San Diego. Powerhouse North Carolina came to Provo for the NCAA Soccer Quarterfinals. With the match tied at one late in regulation, the Cougars had a chance on a breakaway, but Lindsey Lizenby Cutshaw's shot at an empty net was knocked away at the very last second. Both teams made great saves to protect their nets, but it was late in the second overtime when the Tar Heels' Crystal Dunn was able to score the golden goal to give North Carolina the win and NBOU season. This was the second time since 2003 that the women's soccer team made it to the Elite Eight. And 11 News reporter Kathleen Keller shows how the support of Cougar fans gave these ladies a season they'll always remember. Stands at Southfield overflowed with fans as the Cougars took on North Carolina for a chance to go to the Final Four in the NCAA tournament. Senior Cammie Jensen says that she believes that the fans' enthusiasm helped them make it this far in the tournament. Fan support was phenomenal this year, and I think our ability to just play for each other and play for the school really came out this year. And I think that's why we became such a favorite among the fans here. It seemed like the games were as popular and packed as the football and basketball games. More fans meant less seats, but that didn't stop people from cheering on the Cougars, even if they had to stand. Even though tickets had already sold out, hundreds of fans still waited outside of these gates in order to be let in standby so they could watch the women's soccer team play their last home game. The game was not only the last home game of the season, but the last soccer game of the year for the Cougars. Head coach Jennifer Rockwood says that although the team didn't win, they accomplished many goals this season and have a lot to be proud of. You know, we created a lot of phenomenal memories, um, especially in this last month. Uh, and we just told the girls afterwards that to be proud and to walk away with their held, head held high, they'll remember these memories for a lifetime. At Southfield, Kathleen Keller, 11 News. This game was the fifth most attended soccer game in the history of the team with more than 4,000 people filling the stands. The soccer team may be done, but now it's time for the postseason for women's volleyball. The Lady Cougars host the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament on Friday and Saturday. Arizona State will face Oklahoma Friday at 5 and then BOU plays New Mexico State at 7. The winners will play in the second round in the, at 7 in the, on Saturday in the Smithfield House. The men's basketball team faced a tough challenge when they took on undefeated Cal State Northridge at the Marriott Center. Coach Rose may have switched up the starting lineup, but they still had Tyler Haas, and that's what mattered, he, because he lit up the Matadors for career-high 32 points. Haas is the first Cougar to, Cougar to score 32 since number 32, Jimmer Fredette. Highly touted basketball prospect Jabari Parker was greeted with open arms on his official visit to BOU Saturday. Parker can't officially sign until April, so he has some time to decide between BOU and schools like Duke. Wouldn't that be great to get Jabari Parker and uh, Tyler Hawes on the same oh court? Oh gosh, it'd be like double Jimmer. <laughs> there you be go. Awesome. And, and we got to re replace Baron Davies with, with somebody, so hopefully we can have you know, someone as talented as him, exactly. like Parker or someone else. Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. All right. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Still to come at 11 News at Noon. Chris's Style, a YouTube sensation, is now part of Holiday Celebration. All the lights flash in little Gangnam Style when we return. Stay with us. It's Christmas lights Texas style or Griswold style or well you'll see what I mean. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. All right, a homeowner near Austin has timed his light display to match the beats of a popular Gangnam Style song. The thousands of twinkling lights are drawing visitors from all around the region, and the original song by Korean pop star Psy has set a record for YouTube hits and more than 825 million views. All right. That's pretty awesome. Awesome. That's 11 News at noon for Monday, November 26. You can join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching, and have a great afternoon.